Brian Green Property Group New Zealand Rally Championship returns after 546 long days. And we're better to start the season than Dunedin. Little Scotland, home to Lanark Castle and world famous Albatross, these days a city vibrant with restaurants, bars and the colour of student life. The Otago Rally starts with a party in the city centre. Drivers mix with fans on Friday night before hitting the stages on Saturday morning. Hayden Patton returns for another shot at NZRC Glory. Uh, yeah, I think it was obviously a pretty tough year for everyone, uh, but I think the positive that New Zealand's come out of it very strong and, you know, that's, you know, testament with how many entries we've got here for this weekend and how many people are just eager to get back into it. So, locally, I think rallying's probably almost stronger than it's ever been. But it's the defending champ, Ben Hunt, who will lead the cars away. Everyone likes winning, so we'll be trying to do our best and one of the best rallies in the country and yeah, can't wait, it's going to be awesome. Category 1 and 1A four-wheel drives are a mix of FIA R5, Group NZ and AP4 cars like this Mitsubishi, Brian Green, who at 73 has lost none of his enthusiasm for the sport. So let's check out the start list for day one. Hayden Patton leads away defending champion Ben Hunt. Rana Hoare in a late withdrawal leaves Josh Marston third on the road, ahead of Dylan Turner's Audi, Emma Gilmore, and a group of young guns, Matt Summerfield, Jack Hawkswood, and Robbie Stokes. Kingsley Jones, the first of the R5 cars in the Skoda, just ahead of Regan Ross's Fiesta, and Phil Campbell's AP4 version. Grant Blackberry in the R4 car, Todd Borden, Matt Adams, former circuit racer Hayden McKenzie, Duncan McCrosty, Brian Green, and John O'Shapley round out a solid field. So seven stages a day with bonus points for the top five finishes each day. Day one using stages around Lawrence. Day two uses the stages around Waihola and Berwick Forest. The amazing Curry Bush stage to end the rally. Fine warm conditions on Saturday morning with the Otago Classic Field running ahead of the NZRC. The roads will be well swept for Hayden Patton. Although those cars are rear wheel drive so they will be on slightly different lines and there'll be the odd headache for Hayden as he checks his notes pre-stage. Aiden wasting no time setting a new stage record at 10 minutes 55.7 seconds. Emma Gilmore had a positive build up to the rally with new co-driver Mel Peden and she'd like to take the challenge to Patton over the morning stages. And after a lot of work over the off season and heartbreak with engine failures in 2019, the team's decided to go to the Motorsport New Zealand approved Joker engine in this car, which is a crate built engine and should bring a lot of reliability to the package. Patton was in charge by stage three though, smashing the 49 kilometre stage record by minute 43. 20, high pass to lift plus. Very long right, tight ends, half six straightens, 100. Gilmore was comfortably in second going into stage three, but her luck ran out again, the car dying mid-stage with an electrical fault, and was all over for day one. Mel Peden delivering the bad news. Ben Hunt is defending his 2019 championship. After training Gilmore and Jack Hawkswood on stage one, he moved to second place by the end of stage two. Dylan Turner, only fifth on the opening stage, but the only driver pushed hard on stage three to overtake Hunt for second position. And that's great reward for a car that was literally only finished the Wednesday morning before the event and ready to send from one end of the country to the other. Jack Hawks with the first of the second generation drivers and after leading Hunt on stage one he dropped time in stage three with soft brakes but still enjoyed the stage. And this is probably the longest stage that Jack's ever done in his rallying career at close to 50 kilometres so car management is a huge part of it. How, uh, how are you liking the stages? Yeah, they're bloody awesome, eh? I had a great, great time in there. I was a, I was a little bit, um, a little bit nervous about it to start with, but yeah, no, I had a, had a, had a blast. Canterbury siblings Matt and Nicole Summerfield in the ex Brian Green Mirage AP4, and they'd move up to fourth place, just a second behind Hunt by the end of the morning stages. <laughs> Matt did get the opportunity to use this car at this rally in 2019. Loved it so much. He's obviously in it now. Small crease, 30. Two right. 
Matt, how's it all going this morning, mate? Good? Uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, it's just silly. The throttle's hanging up a little bit on me, but I only really notice it in touring, so the stages have been fine, but it's not, it's not going to put that in the back of the head. <laughs> Another second generation driver, Robbie Stokes, moving up from his 2019 R2 Fiesta, just 1.8 seconds back from Summerfield. Throughout the 2020 season, where there were no championship events, Robbie really announced himself as a contender to watch in the 2021 New Zealand Rally Championship season. Another Canterbury driver, Holden Barina AP4 pilot Josh Marston, holding sixth place. Bill Campbell broke a drive shaft in Special Stage 3 and lost time repairing in service. After a strong start, it was disappointment for Hayden McKenzie. We started getting into it and for whatever reason the car's gone into full limp mode. I think the fastest I saw was 120 k's and it won't just won't rev, so he's hoping we can fix it and, and get back out. So a few dramas in the morning, but Hayden Patton, the clear leader, over two minutes ahead after three stages from Dylan Turner, just seven seconds separating the next four. Patton continued his dominant form throughout the afternoon stages, stretching his lead to three minutes and giving himself a safe buffer should anything go wrong. But behind him, Robbie Stokes was on a charge, taking the second place position on stage six, the stage time 16 seconds faster than Ben Hunt. Those 16 seconds also dropping Hunt out of the top three for the first time as Dylan Turner held on to third place. Turner trying a new tyre on this rally and finding some good speed. And great to see Dylan's spectacular sideways driving style is still out there. Fifth place for Matt Summerfield, but he had a 20 second time penalty from service, which cost him a top three position. Josh Marston had been sixth, but lost that position to Jack Hawkswood, who was clawing back the 30 seconds he'd lost on stage three. Regan Ross in the first of the R5 cars in his Fiesta, sitting in eighth. Former Rally Challenge winner Grant Blackbury was ninth in his Mitsubishi Evo 10. Behind him came the two Category 1A cars of Matt Adams and Todd Borden. These cars no longer qualify for the Gold Star Rally Championship, but still compete in the four-wheel drive class. Adams is a past Rally Challenge winner as well. Todd Borden is using the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6 that he won Rally Otago in 2003. And Todd does have a brand new car on the way, a Ford Fiesta R5. But if he keeps having moments like this, he might need it sooner. Kingsley Jones and the Skoda R5 next. And Kingsley's the first one to admit he doesn't like the wide open, fast roads of Otago. So he's really looking to kickstart his campaign at Rally Fomeray next right. month. Seven to right. Four minus, then seven to right. <laughs> and I don't think that's helped his love of the rally. After some health battles, it's great to see title sponsor Brian Green back competing at the ripe old age of 73. Brian had a challenging day learning the new car, one that Shane Van Gisbergen piloted to win at Jack's Ridge last year. Duncan McCrosty debuting the ex-Hawkswood Championship winning Mazda 2. Pretty happy with his day one pace. Yep, oh, that eight left over that. <laughs> how's, how's the car? Uh, it's fine, fantastic. And what's the plan for uh, that short tarmac stage? Are you going to try and put on a bit of a show? Oh, um, oh no. <laughs> Be smart. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's the traditional street sprint to end day one and a big crowd to witness the action.
only drama, this spin by Robbie Stokes, which would cost him second place. It's the old story. You can't win a rally on a super special stage, but you sure can lose it. That's a bit rough, eh? Yep. So confirming day one results, Patton comfortably leads from Turner and Stokes. Just two seconds back to Ben Hunt, then it's Summerfield, Hawkswood, Marston and Regan Ross rounding out the top eight. It's day two of the Winmax Breaks Rally Otago, and another beautiful Otago day greets the crews as they prepare to leave Dunedin. So we're here for day two of Rally Otago. We uh, yeah, had the disappointment of not finishing. I um, had some good pace. We're in a good position, P2, day two. Some of the young fellas uh, showed us how it's done. You yeah, need a bit of luck to go our way. Patton looking for a clean sweep of today's stages as they head into Berwick Forest. These roads definitely a challenge with punctures a high probability. And just look at the difference in the road conditions day on day. Day one, big wide roads, these are narrow forestry roads, some bits even with grass up the middle. And then into Waipori Gorge, a beautiful public road station, so tight and twisty unlike any other road in Dunedin, with drops into the river below. The morning finishes with McLaren Gully along the top of the coastal hills, past the car graveyard known as Joe's Corner. Patton taking a 1 minute 19 lead over the morning stages, Emma Gilmore back looking for day 2 points, impressive speed again through the stages and second fastest at special stage 10. And although she's out of overall contention, day two bonus points could be crucial when the championship finishes at Rally Coromandel. But it was Josh Marston who was holding the second, fastest after the first three stages, just 8.6 seconds ahead of Gilmore. And the team's done a whole heap of work on this car, there's a lot of changes over the off-season. So Josh spent most of day one getting used to them, and on day two, he's ready to charge. Dylan Turner held fourth, but was slightly down on pace compared to day one. And with a new tyre brand to get used to in some of these really challenging conditions, it's just one of those things Dylan's trying to get his head round as the day goes on. Robbie Stokes fifth on stage eight, but retired at the end of stage nine with mechanical issues. So that left Ben Hunt in fifth, but two minutes down on Patton after three stages. And Ben's normally a master of these tighter forestry stages, so for him it's a bit frustrating not to be right at the front end of the field. Brunt Blackberry would finish the morning in sixth place. Regan Ross doesn't have many miles under his belt in the R5 Fiesta, and the R5 cars are less powerful than the top 84 cars, so 7th is a great result. Kingsley Jones is back after going off the road in day 1, but with no damage, so a top 10 place on offer in day 2. The R5 cars are slightly limited in the way that they're geared on these ultra-fast Otago roads, but they'll come into their own when we get to Rally Whangarei. More bad luck for Phil Campbell out on stage nine with damage suspension. And I'm sure Phil will be looking to put a tough start to the championship behind him. In the battle for the older Cat 1A cars, Todd Borden moved up to seventh after Jack Hawkswood stopped on stage eight. Borden showing he's lost none of his enthusiasm for attacking the stages in the bulletproof Evo 6. He's always been flamboyant. Nothing's changed, the car or the driver. Matt Adams in ninth, showing that the Evo 9 is still competitive. 
and it's great to see Matt moving up as the champion in the Rally Challenge class. It's designed as a stepping stone into the full New Zealand Rally Championship. He's got a deceptively smooth and fast driving style and generally he's there at the finish and that's a big part of rallying. 180. Eric Forrest would take its toll on Matt and Nicole Summerfield, forced to stop and change a tyre and then another puncture in stage nine dropping them out of the top ten. And only six kilometres into the stage, with 30 to go, they had no choice but to stop and change this first one. Duncan McCrosty inside the top 10 on day two standards, and the Mazda 2. It's great to see Duncan back out rallying. We saw him a few years back in the historic championship in a Nissan Bluebird Turbo. It's fantastic to see him in the Cat 1 car. And despite taking a battering with a tyre barrier on the super stage, Brian Green showing plenty of speed on the stages to round out the top 10 on day two positions. And ironically, when Greeny spun at the super stage, it was right into one of his own advertising signs. That's embarrassing. So at the first service for the day, Haddon leads day two and overall. Turner's day one pace keeps him in second, but Hunt closing with Marston fourth in the overall standings and Regan Ross fifth. Stage 11 would be a turning point in the rally. Hayden Padden would suffer a puncture. Ben Hunt took the stage win, moving up into second overall. Josh Marston follows. He's now up to third overall. But as we see from Summerfield's onboard, it was much worse for Dylan Turner in the Audi. Down crest, Jesus. 24 right. I think I turned in maybe just a little bit too early, a bit too shallow. Problem was there was no room to go wide, so we hit a bank and popped the car up. And once we hit the ground sideways, it just barrel rolled down the road. Five right. Back on board in stage right. 12 with Brian Green, and that's Emma Gilmore's sideline with broken power steering. Foot right plus. And then drama in the cockpit, as co-driver Fleur Pedersen realised that plus. all is not right. Oh, we're on fire. Okay. We're on fire. We're fucking on fire. We're on fire. So this turned out to be another power steering problem with the oil like catching bonnet. fire. It was part of a really treacherous stage that also saw Grant Blackberry retire from fourth place with electrical problems. So to special stage 14 and the final stage of day two, news that Ben Hunt is also out with engine failure. Matt Summerfield finished ninth on day two results, but held on to fifth overall, despite a pair of punctures. Great season start for Duncan McCrosty, seventh on day two and overall as well. Great to see his team out, supporting him in their own unique, cheeky fashion. Matt Adams finished sixth overall and second in class 1A. While some redemption for Kingsley Jones, picking up fifth on day two, despite the DNF on the very first day. A well-deserved fourth place overall for Todd Borden, and a class win in Cat 1A is a bonus. We're looking forward to seeing what Todd can do when he gets his hands on that new Fiesta later in the year. And the Dunlop driver of the rally going to Regan Ross, podium third on day two and overall for the former winner of the Otago Classic Rally. It's been slow and steady for Josh Marston on day one, but he pushed hard on day two to claim second overall. No doubt about our winner and the class of the field, Hayden Padden, despite this late puncture. Oh, 
Hey, first of all, congratulations, mate. I think that's uh, safely secured you the rally. I know you've tested a little bit yourself and team tested a couple of times, but overall, pretty happy, I assume. Yeah, obviously, we've got the result. Uh, would have been nice to have a clean sweep of stages, but um, obviously, a, a couple of tyre issues today. I'm not really sure why. Uh, obviously, the roads are just a bit more abrasive and we seem to be pushing them a little bit harder, so uh, it's something to look at before Whangarei, but all in all, great weekend for the team. Everyone's worked really, really hard. and proud of all the boys and uh, not only our car, um, uh, Andy, another car we run as well, so um, yeah, good weekend. It's been a crazy weekend with so much attrition, um, look I can't be happy, you know we had a few niggles on the way but the team did a great job, kept the car going and I'm really really happy with the pace this year, you know today we sort of pushed on a little bit more and feel like showed a bit more of that pace, you know Andrew did a great job and you know I can't thank all our sponsors, Rubber Developments and RDL Performance enough, like um, yeah. It's just been one of those long rallies where we've just stuck in it and it's um, paid off a good result. I know you were down a little bit at times yesterday in your water streams. Did you think second overall was, was possible this time yesterday? No, no, no. We were, I, I sort of in the back of my mind was going to have a bit of a push for a sort of a podium on the day results because I knew there was more pace there. I just needed to extract it. Um, so, yeah, no, I never think I'd be here right now. So confirming the overall results, a massive lead by Hayden Padden, but a great comeback by Josh Master to take second. Todd Borden, the first of the Cat 1A cars, and Duncan McCrosty, the final finisher, on a tough event to open the season. With a battle scar on the car, Hayden. We'll leave the final word to Hayden Padden, showing Dunedin Mayor Aaron Hawkins just how much fun clean green speed can be on the streets of Dunedin. Make sure to subscribe to the NZRC.TV YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and watch out for the highlights of Two Wheel Drive and the Rally Challenge in the next week. But for now, goodbye from the Brian Green Property Group New Zealand Rally Championship.